If you have those six things on hand, you know that you'll always be able to eat lunch. Hi guys, welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you the secrets for making the perfect grilled cheese. So here we have most of the ingredients. We have every kind of cheese that uh, I own, including cream cheese spread, very important. We have not butter, and we even have Parmesan cheese. So normally I would use sourdough, but we only have one slice left. So today I will be using buttermilk. Basically, good bread. Good bread is important. So now I have the pan out, and we are going to start heating her up. Look at the flame. That flame will unlock my grilled cheese. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the bread, two slices of bread, open them up to the middle, and take your butter and uh, just uh, butter them up. Drop in my butter. And then I'm gonna just uh, plop, plop it down. So quickly, quickly do the other one. She's going to be crisp. Now, while that is uh, searing, you want to butter the other side. I really believe in this uh, this technique, but you know, some people just don't like all this butter. And if that's you, that's fine but I think a great grilled cheese needs to be crisp inside and out oh, that's not crisp yet okay you want the side that's down to get really crispy so that you can flip it and then have that crispy side be the inside of your grilled cheese let's see this one is probably crispier ah uh, yes look at that okay and then, important, turn the heat down to low after you crisp up the first side because you do not want the other side to burn while you are putting on your cheeses. Okay, so we just flip this, turned it down to low. I'm taking the uh, cream cheese and I'm going to put this on the inside. So generally, I just set it on there because then it'll get a bit warm and then I can spread it out. You gotta be careful not to tear your bread. I really like to pack it on. You'll learn what you like. Now you're gonna want to just start selecting cheeses. I have many cheeses and I'm gonna just start putting them on the bread. Swiss. The last piece of cheddar. Some Havarti. And then make sure you're kind of distributing your cheese so that it goes up to all of the edges. With this technique, you won't have all of the same cheeses all the way across, but that's just gonna give you varieties of flavor. So I'm tearing this one in half, this is provolone, and I'm gonna put the flat edges up against the edge of the sandwich like that. Finally, I'm gonna sprinkle some shredded cheese in there. spread it out because you don't want all your cheese to be concentrated in the center. Now I'm getting out a spatula and I'm going to flip the side with less cheese on it onto the side with more cheese on it and then quickly adjust so that the bread lines up. This is a very important step. You take your parmesan and you take some garlic salt and you put it on the outside to create a crust. So I just kind of shake it on. 
not too much especially be careful with the garlic salt i like to take my spatula and kind of rub it around to make sure it gets dispersed okay and as soon as that's on there go ahead and flip it and apply the same crust to the other side at this point you can turn up the heat a little bit but if you turn it up too much you will finish the outside so the crust will be done before your cheeses are fully melted so we're still at like a medium low and uh, this time I'm gonna get my crust all done so I'm gonna spread it out and everything still but I'm gonna wait to flip it until I think the other side is done at this point you can be a good person and start cleaning up And then usually I just try to either hear or smell when everything is seared up on that side. When you think it's been a long time or you hear or smell, you can check the other side, which I basically do just by flipping. Crust is on pretty well. Gonna continue cleaning. I know a grilled cheese is super not vegan, and I think being vegan is good, but I myself am vegetarian, and I think as a vegetarian, this is one thing I'm extremely happy to still be able to eat, and I really recommend it because it takes like 10 minutes to make. At this point, my crust outside is pretty good. I just want to make sure the cheese is all melted. And it looks like the provolone is still a bit solid here, so I'm going to give it a few more minutes. We're just waiting. Okay, I, I'm done waiting on this, so I'm going to just uh, turn that bitch off, and I'm going to take her over to my cutting board. So uh, here she is. We still have one thing left, which is the chop. Uh, this is an extremely unsafe way to hold a knife, but I cut not fully diagonal, but not straight, kind of in between here, and push her down, and there you go. Grab a plate. Ta-da! And uh, now I'm gonna eat it. Mm. Mm. Look at that. I'm oh, steaming. So I hope you guys enjoyed that recipe and in all seriousness I think it is really important to feel like you can cook for yourself and feed yourself when you are becoming an adult. So even if this is like the most basic recipe ever and all it requires is like six things, if you have those six things on hand you know that you'll always be able to eat lunch. And I want to keep sharing this kind of stuff with you about life hacks or adulting how to's. So if you enjoyed this or you're interested in that, definitely subscribe for more updates and leave me a comment below about anything you'd like to see me show you or talk about. And uh, no judgment because being an adult is hard. It's like, it's like really hard. Okay? 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 And finally, we're going to do our dishes because adults have to clean up after themselves even though I didn't clean up my breakfast.